When preparing a rock sample for a thin section, we typically want to cut our rock into rectangular shaped chips that will fit onto a 1 inch by 2 inch glass slide. For some samples, such as the Applite, which in hand sample is fairly homogeneous in look and composition, we may only be interested in cutting the sample to the appropriate size. However, for other samples, you may also need to consider whether there are any important features in the rock that you want to highlight in your thin section, such as the metamorphic foliation in our granodiorite gnice. Or perhaps there are interesting features hidden within our sample of Catoctin greenstone that we won't see until we have cut into the sample. There are a variety of strategies that you can use to trim your sample, but one way is to think of your sample as a loaf of bread, and we're going to cut a slice. Let's head over to the rock saw. When the rock saw is in operation, even with the splash guard, it's going to generate some spray, so Sarah's going to want to put on a lab apron to help keep her dry. If your equipment does not have a splash or safety guard, you should definitely wear some safety glasses during the operation. Depending on your equipment, cutting rocks may also generate a lot of noise, so you may need to protect your hearing by wearing some earmuffs or earplugs. Another optional piece of safety gear that you may want to wear is a pair of gloves, which provide some protection for your hands from any flying rock shards or uh, sharp debris while cutting. Now that Sarah is ready, she will plug in the power cord and position and line up her sample with the saw blade. Some saws come equipped with sliding specimen holders to hold your specimen steady. Feel free to use these features if your saw has them, but you can also just guide your samples by hand. When you're ready, flip the power switch into the on position. Before cutting, visually confirm that there is enough water in the reservoir to cool and lubricate the saw blade. Diamond saw blades must never be run dry, so make sure there is enough water to prevent the buildup of heat and to wash out the fine rock cuttings. Having confirmed that there is enough water in the reservoir, Sarah will now begin to slowly advance the rock towards the saw blade. You want to push forward with enough force so that the rock is being cut, but not so much to cause strain on the saw blade. The appropriate amount of force and the time to complete your cuts will vary depending on the hardness of your sample. Do not twist or torque the rock once the cut has been started, and if you see any sparks or the saw jams, something is wrong and you should turn off the saw immediately. Going back to the loaf of bread analogy, Sarah will now cut off a slice from the sample that is around a half inch to inch thick. We also want to make these cuts as parallel to each other as possible. This will be important later when we mount our chips on the forcer pole for grinding and polishing, and also during the epoxying process. Now that we have a slice of rock, Sarah will rinse it off and examine both sides for any internal features or other areas of interest that she wants to examine in the thin section. Once you have identified an area of interest, it is a good practice to outline the area on one side of the slice. A black sharpie works well for this. Using a ruler or a glass slide as a template, Sarah is going to measure off an approximately 1 by 2 inch area with the sharpie to give her some guidance while further trimming her sample. With the sample marked, we'll take it back to the rock saw where Sarah will continue making cuts, following the rectangular shape of the outline. As a general rule, it's easier to go ahead and cut the longer sides first. We'll continue this process for each of our rock samples until we have produced a set of suitable chips ready to be polished. As you proceed with the cutting process, other interesting features may appear, so save any usable scrap pieces for future thin sections. As your sample chips are cut and trimmed, you may want or need to label them with a Sharpie. It can be very easy to mix up your specimens, especially if you are preparing multiple chips, so make sure you mark them on a side that you do not plan on polishing and mounting to a glass slide. Once you've done that, we're now ready to move on to the next steps in the thin section process, grinding and polishing our sample chips, and frosting our slides.